Everybody we've talked to has loved Vietnam, so our feelings about visiting here are complicated. We've spent a long time trying to assess what went wrong, and in the end, it all came down to location, location, location. We made two mistakes and two good decisions. Here's what we learned so you will have a better experience. Stay tuned until the end where we tell you what we spent and whether we'll be back. Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. We spent three weeks in Ho Chi Minh City and a week in Hanoi, and we have opinions about where to stay in both of those cities. Originally, we planned to visit Da Nang and some East Coast areas as well as Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi, but heavy rains and flooding forced us to cancel those plans. I did my advanced research regarding the best neighborhood to stay in Ho Chi Minh City, and I kept seeing District 1. But we found out that not all of District 1 is created equal. Because we're on the move every single month as full-time travelers, and sometimes even more often than that, we don't always have the luxury of time to do any sort of deep planning before arriving in a place. So, sometimes we learn the hard way. We made two big mistakes and two good decisions. Let's start with mistake number one. And that was not taking a guided tour of Ho Chi Minh City the first few days that we got there. It would have helped us to understand the city so much more. Taking a tour is something we normally do when we first get to a city, but we had just come from Japan and a 42-day whirlwind tour, and the last week was especially hectic because our daughter showed up. So we were kind of burnt out from that trip, and we did not plan anything in this first couple weeks, actually. Originally, all we wanted to do was decompress for a bit before jumping into the deep end. We always recommend that you get a tour as soon as you can when you arrive in a new city. But unfortunately, in Ho Chi Minh City, most of the tours were on the back of a motorbike. Not that we were 100% opposed to this, but we had some reservations. Actually seeing all the motorbikes in the city, I was pretty much opposed to that when we drove in from the airport. So on these motorbike tours, the guide is usually very experienced and very careful about things. But even if you're used to riding a motorbike, doing it in a city like Ho Chi Minh is next level and you really have to be aware of what you're getting yourself into. And culturally, it seems that locals often treat traffic rules like suggestions, and that didn't give us the greatest confidence about the safety of motorbike tours. So our good decision number one was that we found a tour through Airbnb experiences called Three Coolest Neighborhoods in Saigon. We have been booking a lot of good tours lately through Airbnb experiences. We have no affiliation or sponsorship by anything related to Airbnb. But this was such a great tour that we think whoever you are, you should take it. Just be sure to wear good walking shoes. It's a walking tour. Unfortunately, if you have mobility issues, this is not your tour. But otherwise, turn on your pedometer and let's start pumping those arms. Not really. It's not a fast walk, but you'll cover a lot of ground. There are a few places where you'll travel with your guide by taxi, or in our case, a Vietnamese electric car service. So your feet do get a few breaks. This tour was fabulous. It helped us to understand more about the city in every way food, culture, history, it had everything. You don't need to book this tour through Airbnb. They have their own website and YouTube channel that you might find interesting. And we've linked both ways in the description below. Had we taken this tour sooner, we might have stayed in Ho Chi Minh City for a full month. But as it was, we took a loss on the last week at our Airbnb in order to spend time in Hanoi and perhaps redeem the experience. So a few facts about Ho Chi Minh City. It's the largest city in Vietnam with a population of over 8 million people. It also is split up into 24 districts. Our guide taught us about a few key districts, and in our opinion, these are the primary ones to consider, unless you are living here full time as an expat. He said, District 1 is for fun, hotels, bars, nightlife. District 3 is for living, but also a great spot for tourists to stay. District 4 to be robbed, this is ancient history, but still was funny because it used to be a mafia-driven place. And District 5 is for food, because Chinatown's there. So let's talk briefly about each of the districts to give you an overview, and then we'll talk to you about mistake number two. District 1 has many of the luxury hotels, and alongside there are high-end shops, the Opera House, government offices, foreign embassies, and several other larger buildings. But it's also considered the tourist and backpacker section of the city, so it's got a very diverse group of people here. Many, many online neighborhood recommendations will suggest this as the number one area to stay in the city. Especially for its busy nightlife scene. But there's also a few problems with this district, which we'll get into when we talk about our second mistake. 
District 3 is a very residential area with more green space than District 1. Visiting here gave us a better perspective on how the Vietnamese people live. Wandering through the neighborhoods showed us a more peaceful side to Ho Chi Minh City. It's known for its delicious local cuisine. Street carts are everywhere, but they are crowded, which is one indicator that the food is safe. So you'll have a more authentic experience here. It's a popular alternative to District 1 for tourists. Time Out Magazine rated it 18th on a list of the world's 50 coolest neighborhoods. We wish we had known about this sooner. In District 4, what used to be a mafia-run area has since been cleaned up by the government and is flourishing since the 1990s. A lot of businesses have set up offices here. And District 4 has a cool coffee culture. You can walk down a street and easily have a dozen or more coffee shops to choose from. It's got a nice local vibe to it now, and it has a huge fresh food market that's primarily for locals with authentic foods that is always busy, which is a good sign. The drawback is that it's farther away from many of the tourist sites you want to visit so you need to take a grab to get around. District 5 is the area known as Chinatown. This is where you'll find most of the Chinese Vietnamese people. Chinese traders settled here during the 18th century and brought their customs, culture, and traditions. It's home to numerous temples and landmarks that reflect its Chinese influence. You'll find Chinese medicine here with its herbs and potions and Eastern style healthcare treatments. You'll also find plenty of authentic restaurants. Before we talk about mistake number two, we're excited to share that we've started our own absolutely free community forum that we are calling La Familia. You can ask questions about trip planning and all things related to travel there. A video with the details is linked in the description below. So what is mistake number two? Well, first, not knowing that District 1 has many different areas, with some being much better for visitors. We've been told that District 1 is the place to be if you're a tourist because it's central to all the main sites. But there's a busy multi-lane highway that separates the north and south portions of the district. The north side has more options for museums, activities, and dining. So our big mistake was we picked an Airbnb on the south side. What are some of the problems with the south side? Well, first of all, our area was very congested with motorbikes and air pollution. Also, we didn't know how much effort it would take to navigate to get to the north side of the district. And a lot of the food sold by the sidewalk street vendors isn't always safe for tourists. So let's talk about motorbikes, traffic, and air quality. Because we lived in Cairo for a couple weeks, we felt comfortable battling crazy traffic when crossing the streets. But a lot of motorbike drivers view red lights or crosswalks as mere suggestions, even when pedestrians are crossing. And there are so many motorbikes in Ho Chi Minh City that they have to park them on the sidewalks. And the worst part was our Airbnb building's first floor was a parking garage for hundreds of motorbikes. So every time we had to go in and out or wait for an elevator to the ninth floor of our building where we were staying, we were breathing in gas fumes and exhaust. And about navigating to the north side. Because of all this traffic, trying to cross a busy highway to get to the north side of the Ben Fan Market was more effort than we wanted when heading to some place casual like a restaurant. You put your life in your hands just a little bit when you are trying to cross these streets and it doesn't really matter that you have a green light. We kept hearing about Ben Than Market but we didn't pick up on it until too late that it's a very touristy market and the food stalls aren't that great and also some of them close early. So we're finally here at the Ben Than Market. So even though the market is a central point in the district we will give it a hard pass. The souvenirs there are also way overpriced. Not that we ever buy souvenirs. No space. Or interest. Getting back and forth from the south side of the district is not good for a nice casual walk after dinner to help your food digest. Food is such a big part of how we adjust to a new city. If we're hangry or disappointed with our food, it seriously impacts our enjoyment of a place. I'm not a fan of eating fish with their heads still on or staring eyeball to eyeball with a fresh shrimp. So some local seafood wasn't appealing. But otherwise, we really do love to eat local foods. Let's see what you got here. So this is a clay pot pork and then just plain rice and then a soup that goes with it. I will need to look up exactly what it is, but... Is that the sour soup or...? Oh yeah, it is. It's, it's sour soup. Every day, food stalls would pop up right outside our building, but we saw meat sitting out for hours with very little activity of people buying, cooking, or eating the food in those places. And that's a huge red flag to us. Even our guide cautioned us against sampling certain street food. He said he had people miss early morning tours because of food issues. 
I think we would have experienced more Vietnamese cuisine if we were on the <laughs> north side of the highway. So our second good decision was deciding to detour and spend our final week in Hanoi. We learned from our mistakes in Ho Chi Minh City and booked a hotel in a busy central area of Hanoi. Thanks to recommendations from others, we stayed in the old quarter near Huan Kim Lake. You have to weave around some motorbikes, but there are fewer of them. And the lakeside promenade gives you an easier path to walk than on the streets with broken sidewalks. Even though we didn't have time to take a tour, we had a great experience that felt like a lighter lift than our previous three weeks. And we had an easier time finding local foods that felt safe to eat. Our hotel even offered a free breakfast, which allowed us to try Vietnamese-style breakfast foods. We found some great coffee shops and restaurants tucked away in side alleys. Our location checked off all the boxes for us to have a great visit. So let's talk about what we paid. Our District 1 Ho Chi Minh City Airbnb cost $675.19 for a month, which breaks down to only $22.51 per night. Our Old Town Hanoi Hotel was $503.89 or $71.98 per night. Our Three Coolest Neighborhoods Tour was $74.12 for both of us. So let's talk about what we would recommend and would we visit again. We highly recommend booking a tour to get a lay of the land. Do it early. Our guide recommended that District 3 was the best and we agreed with that. You'll get fresh local foods that you'll feel safer eating, you'll be living among locals, and you'll be close by to some famous sites. If you really want to be in District 1, then make sure you're on the north side of Ben Than Market. Even half a mile can make a huge difference, especially if you're having to cross a busy highway. If you're looking to experience the real Vietnam, staying in a luxury hotel and eating at the hotel restaurant isn't the way to go. There are plenty of affordable Airbnbs, hotels, and restaurants. Visit a few cities if you can. Vietnam is a big country, so give yourself time to explore. So would we visit again? Well, personally, I liked Hanoi a lot, and I really wish we would have spent more time than a week there. It was a much different experience for me than Ho Chi Minh City, mainly because I felt I could explore it more. It was cool to find some local coffee shops and restaurants tucked away there. I felt like wandering about the city was easier and making connections was easier. In fact, we were eating at a local restaurant and a guy sitting at a table next to us, Sean, told us some amazing stories about his time in Vietnam, which helped me want to visit more areas of the country. And frankly, you know, it was a little cooler than Ho Chi Minh City, which may have influenced me a little bit. Sweating less was kind of nice. I don't know, there were definitely activities that I wanted to do in Ho Chi Minh City that we didn't have a chance to. I wanted to see the Mekong Delta and um, the tunnels and we just didn't have time. And I think just because everything just felt harder, it was a harder experience, but I would be willing to go even back to Ho Chi Minh City. And I definitely want to explore central Vietnam, which we didn't even touch because the weather wasn't really great. Yeah, so I vote that we really need to come back to Vietnam, come back with a better attitude about where we are, wipe out what we, our first experience with Ho Chi Minh City, and think about, you know, what we didn't get to experience yet, and start all over again. I completely agree. I think that there are going to be cities and countries that we really resonate with and places that are less so, but especially for Vietnam, there are so many people that love it, love it, love it, that I feel like we haven't done it nearly enough justice and yeah. need to give it another shot. Getting off on the wrong foot was probably our only problem. So we wanna hear your thoughts. What do you think about Vietnam? Have you had experiences? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. We hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already. We have another episode coming out from Vietnam that we think you'll really enjoy as well. And check out findinggenemarie.com. Lots of articles there, our forum for La Familia, and more things for you to check out. Until next time. Until next time.